So I just watched the first episode of Mando Season 3. And let me tell you, this was not it. After Andor, I knew nothing else would be better. But this episode didn't even try, man. I went into this with absolutely no expectations and was still disappointed. Granted, it's only the first episode. But if the rest of them are even remotely like this, I think I'm gonna sit this one out. Actually, that's not true because I plan to make a video for every episode in Season 3. But let's start with the things I did like. Overall, the show looks pretty good. It's not Andor level good, I mean not even close, but it still looks acceptable and believable. That in the VFX is awesome as always. Pedro looks sexy as ever. This is the way. And Grogu is still the cutest thing in the galaxy. I like Carl Weathers character, Grief. <laughs> I actually didn't know that was his name until like right now. But also, the best character in the show is the N1 Starfighter. And that's pretty much it. Damn, that was a short list of good things. But now on to the stuff that just ain't right. Be prepared, it's kind of a lot. This beginning CGI monster fight was dumb as hell. For one, we don't need any more CGI monster fights in our media. And two, we've already had a few in this show already, so it's getting kind of stale. Also, why are we having this sacred ceremony in this lake where turtle monsters just spawn? Like, you knew this thing was coming, so this must have happened before. On top of that, why are y'all getting your asses beat? Aren't you elite warriors? Why are you putting explosives on its shell? The obvious strongest part of the creature. Sorry, that was a bit nitpicky. I should really be focusing on what the point of all this is. Did someone send this creature? Why is it so aggressive when unprovoked? Oh wait, it's just here so Din can kill it and look like a badass. Okay, that's cool. I actually realized that the first episode of every season has a scene to make Mando look like a badass, which is actually pretty cool. The reason why this particular scene sucks compared to past seasons is because it has no purpose in the actual plot. In season 1, we're shown he's a badass and an elite bounty hunter. In season 2, he's looking for information about other Mandalorians. There is absolutely no reason for him to beat this monster. Just stop wasting my time with this CGI turtle shit and get to the dialogue that- Wait a minute. Also, wastes my time by telling me things I already knew. So with 25% of the episode already wasted, let's go to Navarro. Which looks pretty cool actually. This dialogue is not giving me anything of major value, but grief is chill, so I'll give it a pass. Then I hear pirates, and I'm sure we're all thinking the same thing. No way we get to see our boy Hondo, right? Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? What in the generic low-level Gotham henchman shit is this? See, this is where things go from bad to worse. This doesn't feel like a real interaction. It feels like some skit that would happen at Galaxy's Edge. We drink here. Bro, it's a school. There's kids in there. Just read the room, man. Again, these people only exist to have Mando shoot them. There is absolutely zero threat here. And this might be a little nitpicky, but were you all just waiting out in space for Mando to leave? Like, what if he spent the night there? What if he was like, you know what, Grief? I think I'll take you up on that offer and stay a while. Doesn't make any sense. Although this space battle is pretty cool, but I just don't believe any of this would actually happen. And I really hope this guy isn't a recurring villain. And if he is, I sure hope he doesn't plot to steal Grogu later. But let's go back a bit to discuss my least favorite part of this episode. I need him back. No you don't. Please don't bring back IG-11. This is not the way. His death was noble and beautiful. It shaped Mando's character arc in season 1 perfectly. IG-11 served his purpose, quite literally actually. To bring him back would not only be counterintuitive, but bad writing. Like did you people not learn your lesson with this? I'll give you a pass with Darth Maul though, that was pretty good. Anyway, I feel like there are so many other people he could bring with him besides this droid. Or he could just go to Mandalore himself, it's not like that was ever a problem before. But hey, at least we get to see more in Zelens, otherwise known as the best thing to come out of Rise of Skywalker. They say IG-11 needs a new memory circuit to be repaired, which, at that point, just get a new droid, man. But whatever, I guess this is now a side quest to get a new memory circuit? That's pretty normal considering most of the Mandalorian is just side quests. So let's go get this memory circuit at this Mandalorian castle? Oh shit, Bo-Katan. Does she have the memory circuit? Wait, now they're talking about something completely different that is in no way relating to the past 20 minutes of this episode. What happened to your side quest, man? This isn't Hogwarts Legacy, stay on track! It's safe to say this episode doesn't flow very well and the pacing is pretty off. Although I do like that Bo-Katan is kind of mean here. Cause like, she's always been kind of a bitch. A bad bitch, but still a bitch. What I don't like is how she chastises Mando for believing in his traditions, yet her people abandon her for not having a special sword, purely out of their stupid traditions. She's just mad she got fake ass friends. At least this scene gave us some new information about where the show is headed but it still mostly consisted of things we already knew about Mandalore. On top of that, the dialogue and acting in the scene feels a little bland. 
I normally not want to criticize an actor's performance, because I can't act myself, but there was a moment where I thought my screen was frozen, but it was actually just Mando and Bo talking without moving a muscle. Again, I apologize for being nitpicky, but these small things add up to the point where it takes me out of the show. But anyway, thank god this conversation is over. Now let's get back to finding that memory sir. Overall, the episode just didn't wow me like previous season premieres. I understand it also acts as a recap for casual viewers, but there was hardly any substance to work off of. I came into this episode knowing Din's goal to redeem himself on Mandalore, and I left the episode knowing he's going to the city of Sanduri to redeem himself on Mandalore. Everything in between just didn't feel important. Perhaps they will become important in later episodes, but for now, I just don't care. And that's not particularly a good thing for a season premiere. It kind of bums me out because I really love season 1 and 2 of Mandalorian, and I was hoping that Disney could keep its streak going. It's still too early to count them out though. There's a lot of episodes left, and I'm going to keep my hopes high. If you'd like to be up to date when I post my video for episode 2, be sure to subscribe. And I want to thank you all for 500 subscribers. That is actually an insane number to me, and I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for watching my video, and I'll catch you next time.